Hey peeps, we are back. We are talking Love After Lockup, season five, episode six. Hey, before we get into the video, please do me the honors of subscribing to my channel, hitting the notification bell so you can always be notified when I post new content, hitting the thumbs up because that does wonders for my channel, and share. Thanks. All right, peeps, I'm finally catching up on all the shows that I missed, and so let's just get into it the show starts out with melissa and louie and you know i listen i don't know how much more of this i can stand this woman proves every episode that there is a mental disconnect something is clearly wrong with this lady is absolutely devastated over the fact that louie had a good time at the dance class this is their very first date. She is being so disrespectful, calling that dance instructor a dance whore and all of these other comments. It just looks so bad. It is showing that she is not only immature, she has zero self-esteem. She comes across as just being out of touch, just completely delusional. She starts being extremely rude with Louis. She's blaming him for all of this. He couldn't keep his hands off of the woman. It's a dance where you're supposed to have your hands on the woman. I mean, she was just acting as if Louis is this big time flirt and everybody in the world wants him. You know, it's just too much. Louis could not understand why she was behaving the way that she was. And it's, Melissa, you know, Louie did not do anything wrong. The problem is, is that you're too insecure and way too damn jealous. You really do need to grow to hell up. And the truth is, is I feel really bad for Louie. He's got crazy Melissa who is still trapped in high school. And then he's got his, I am too clingy mother. Louie needs to run. For some reason, Melissa in her mind I think that she still sees Louis as the Louis from high school and, you know, 17, 18 year old Louis who, you know, still had all of his teeth and didn't have a drug problem. I think that's what she sees, but that's not what we see, Melissa. That is not what we see. Even Louis tells her in the car, he says, that woman is not interested in me. Even Louis knows nobody's checking for him. This is ridiculous. It also came off as if Louie is trying to build an adult relationship and Melissa just can't do it. She can't do it. She can't move forward because she's still stuck in high school. My thing is the way she behaved in this particular episode, the childish behavior, the yelling, the making him sleep on the floor, throwing him out, dropping him off at the pizza place, just acting ridiculous like this. This is how you're going to lose your relationship with Louie. Personally, I think that Louie needs to separate himself from her and his mama and find himself his own place. He's got a job. His ex-boss has hired him back. You can tell that his ex-boss loves him very much. He really wants nothing but the best for Louis. You know, this crazy behavior that Melissa is showing is definitely, definitely going to end their relationship sooner than later. And you know, when she had him sleep on that floor, I don't know why he did that. Because if I was him, I would have called my crazy mama to pick me up or I would have definitely Ubered out of there. You are not about to have me sleeping on the floor because you are jealous that I danced with the dance instructor on our dance date. That's just the dumbest shit. I, I can't, I can't. Calling that woman a dance skank and her friend on the phone agreeing with the BS, what? Oh God, that's what I call an enabler. You cannot tell me that her friends and her family do not know that her elevator is not reaching the top floor and that she needs some help. Do not enable her behavior. The woman is living on delusional lane and delusional avenue and she needs to be in a mental health facility. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. Anyway, moving on. Honey, now listen, Andy and Brittany, 
Now listen, the episode picks up where it left off, but let me just tell you, Andy's second wife, she's in the streets and she is talking, okay? Andy's second wife said that, first of all, Andy's first wife was not a drug addict. She said Andy is 100% lying about that. She said that Andy's first wife has some family who had some drug problems, but she did not. She also says that her and Andy did not get divorced until about a week ago. That the whole time that Andy was dating Brittany, Andy was married to her, she thought happily. Until right before Brittany was about to get out of jail, he got rid of her and their relationship. She said that Andy does not have a job. He does not have any money. She says that Andy has sued many of his employers for workers' compensation, and he is currently living off workers' compensation. She also said that Brittany had fallen off the wagon, left Andy for her drug dealer, and now she is back because she does not have any money or anywhere else to go. She also said that when Brittany came to Andy's house for the very first time, when she got out, she showed up there with drugs that's what she said not me anyway she also said that remember on the show when we sing Barry try to give them some space and leave she says that Andy told her that Brittany told him that he should go check on Barry and you know while he was gone she was going to take a shower Andy told his ex-wife allegedly that when he got back, Brittany had not showered and she was acting weird. And then the next morning, which is what we seen when she was saying that she needed her space and she wanted to go for a walk, Andy thought that she wanted to go for another fix. So it seems that the ex-wife is also saying that Andy let her know that Brittany had been using drugs while in jail. There is so much his recently ex-wife is out there sharing. She also shared that he was texting her, begging her to take him back and telling her how much he loves her while sitting on the couch with Brittany. So she nicely forwarded all the messages to Brittany and Brittany got back to her and was pissed. So listen, I don't know what the hell is going on over there. All I can say is all of the things that I just said that came from Andy's recent ex-wife is all alleged. I don't know these people. This is just what I'm reporting. I don't want anybody trying to sue me because I don't have no money. Anyway, with all of that and what we saw on this show, my review is going to be quick. First of all, I have always thought from the jump, Brittany is absolutely using Andy. Two, Brittany is not sober. Three, Brittany is not attracted to Andy. She does not want him in any way, shape, or form. The only thing she wants from Andy is Andy's money and a place to lay her damn head. The way she was acting at his house, in that room, talking about he told her he was gonna give her $1,200 and he only gave her 500. That's $500 more than what you had. That's $500 that he did not owe you. You are too damn much. Then she brings up that he told her he was going to buy her a car. What? So what were you going to do with that car? Sell it for dope? Okay, because according to Andy's recent ex-wife, she says that Brittany um, injects meth, which I don't even know how that works. I don't know anything about the drugs, but listen. She also says that Andy got arrested right down at Barry's softball game or baseball game somewhere, and he was coaching. He got arrested for the fraud. She also says that Andy is a top tier liar, that Andy is a scumbag of a father and a scumbag of a person. And you know, I buy it, I buy it, I believe it. Um, Listen. I would like to know where exactly did Grace and Brittany go for that one hour? Was it over to the dealer's house? I'm just saying. Andy's recent ex also said that she has received mail at her house from some new inmate that Andy is talking to. She also said that her and Andy used to watch Love After Lockup together all the time and laugh about the people on the show. And she had no idea that Andy had already started a relationship with a girl from prison in hopes of being on Love After Lockup. Anyway, she says that on the season finale, we are going to see Brittany leave Andy. 
Now listen, according to her, she says the Love After Lockup people are not happy with her sharing this information, but she hasn't signed any contract with the Love After Lockup people, so she doesn't have to keep her mouth shut. She says that if they wanted her to... Um, keep her mouth shut they should have gave her a check okay and let her be a part of the show listen i don't know what the hell is going on but it sounds like to me that andy and britney are perfect for love after lockup garbage i'm just saying anyway listen peeps all of this is alleged and we already knew this anyway didn't we already know that britney wasn't interested in andy and that andy was being used you know andy you a sucker you a sucker and clearly you want to continue to be a sucker because she's at your house now she done came back now that you know she must be out of money and the drug dealers are gone back but um you know according to the recent ex-wife britney says she's gonna stay until the love after lockup checks dry up i'm just saying this is weird to me and i know i keep calling her his recent ex but that's just because she just recently officially got a divorce andy you have not fooled us we were on to you from the jump anyway moving on sheree and anthony um listen love after lockup people wrap them up okay one last episode and wrap okay because we don't need them mm -mm. i'm not liking this couple I, first of all, I don't think that Anthony is really into her like that. I really don't. Um, the whole, he's got an eight o'clock curfew, but she's thrown this party for him. And, you know, supposedly his mama called his PO and got his time pushed back to one o'clock in the morning so he could go to this party. I said, when is it cool for your mama to call the PO? I, I don't, you know, it just seems a little unprofessional and out of the ordinary. Just a little, I don't know. Anyway, he goes to meet with his PO officer and it turns out that his PO is not there. So he has to deal with this female PO who is not here for it. Okay, she said eight o'clock and she puts an ankle monitor on his butt. So he gets in the car, you know, Sheree has already said, well, she's sorry if he can't be there, you know, because she's already paid for this, you know, extravagant party and she's going to go. Well, go on, go. Okay. Sit him at home on the couch with his ankle monitor and, you know, go to the party with Big Richard. Anyway, she starts to cry and make everything about her at this party that she's planned. This dude looks at her and says, let me know when you're done. And she says, I'm done get the entire fuck out of here like this is not okay this is not cute now listen i get secondhand embarrassment watching anthony and sheree this man looks miserable he doesn't look like he's into her and she's doing a little too much she's always whining and she's got this schedule and it's too much not to mention I, I don't like her outfits. Now listen, everybody knows I have zero fashion sense. I have zero fashion sense. But I can tell you what I like and what I don't like. And I have not enjoyed any of her outfits. I, I, not none of them. Not, not one of them. Now when Anthony's mama shows up, I think Anthony and his mom, they've got something. Something is going on in that relationship. Because first he threw away his mama's chicken. And I haven't gotten past that. Okay, I'm gonna let that go. I'm gonna need some help about it. I'm just saying, who throws away their mama's cooking? Anyway, he didn't want her his mama's cooking. He wanted some Popeyes. I love Popeyes. Anyway, then when his mom got there, she was so excited, she jumps on the bed to hold him, and he was not here for it. He really wasn't. So she just, you know, pouted on back to the living room. But what I did respect is that Anthony told her she needs to keep her little nose out of their business. You know, that their relationship is private and, you know, you don't need to get involved. I also respected the fact that he told her that just between the two of them and not in front of Sheree. His mom said, you know, she likes Sheree, but sometimes Sheree is fly at the mouth. And she told him, she said, okay. She said, I'm going to see how you react to when she gets fly at the mouth with you. That was a bit concerning. How is he going to act when she gets fly at the mouth of him? Because we have already seen his behavior so far and I don't love it. I really don't. I think that he needs to realize that these theatrics that she puts on is who she really is. Y'all are not the same people you were when you were 14. 
And you know, I don't feel sorry for her about him maybe possibly not being able to go to his own party because you knew that he was getting fresh out of jail and you also knew that he had parole. You should have thought about that before planning a big party and spending all that money. That's your problem, hun. i I'm just saying, I think that she planned this party mostly for herself so she could show out in front of Big Rich. You know, maybe this is the opportunity for you to tell everybody that you lied and made a fake marriage license. You know, you and Anthony are not married. I don't know. Anyway, I'm done with them. Moving on. Joy in red. All right. Poor Joy. Poor Joy. Girl, you need to pull your life together. Pull your self-esteem back. There's something. Dig it up. I don't know where the hell it went. Hire a PI. See if that guy is done with Renika. Cause girl, please put an APB out on that self-esteem. I can't. Anyway, Ray's mom and sister are in the car with her and they're asking some valid questions, you know, about living in New Mexico. How diverse is it where she lives? And she says, well, it's not as diverse as it is here. And they said, well, how many black people live there? She said, I haven't seen any, which kind of shocks me because I thought that her son was mixed. I thought he was half black, but I guess I was wrong. There's no black people in her town, which as a black woman and a mother of a black son, I would be a little nervous about my son moving into a town where there's no black people because he's bound to get a lot of looks and stares. And I'm sure they're not all going to be nice. I'm just saying. Personally, I don't think that Red has any business moving to her house or moving to her neighborhood, just moving to her town, period. You don't know him outside of jail. You have never seen him outside of jail. You have never seen him inside the jail. And he doesn't know you like that. But most of all, he doesn't know your tiny baby like that. There is no need for this man to fly or drive back to New Mexico with you and this child. While the investigator is looking for your self-esteem, see if they can find some common sense. It's got to be close to the self-esteem. You know, daggone it. This girl's getting on my damn nerves. Anyway, his sister says, well, do you think that he's seen other girls? And she says, well, I never asked that question. Okay. Well, his mom jumps in and she says, well, I'm just going to tell you. I'm going to tell you right now. He's had other women send me money to send to you. Now listen, there's a couple ways you can look at that. First, who the hell are these women? He's clearly finessing these women out of money, which is not a good thing. Two, well, he's sending the money to you, but I wouldn't want money that came from other women who were being finessed. You know what I mean? It just seems, I don't want to sit back and watch another woman get hurt or wrapped up or tangled up into something. And if he is sending you money and you've sent him 40,000 and your son is eating raw hot dogs and you know, you pawn and your family heirlooms, where exactly is this money going? I don't, is, is it going right back to red? Cause that's what it sounds like. I'm sick of this. What I don't like is red sister. She's irritating the shit out of me. She's asking questions and smiling and smirking and everything in the back seats. And you know what? Even if you don't like Joy, you have to realize that for the last seven years, she has been there for your brother. She has been holding him down this entire time, sending him money, going without. Her child has been going without. So why are you trying to drag this woman? It just seems so rude. Was you and your mama sending him 40,000? This is just crazy. Now, when they finally got up the next day and Joy was running late. I don't know why she was running late. I don't know why she was running so slow and the curling of the hair and all that other mess. I don't know what the hell was going on. But when the sister showed up getting smart at the door and she let the door slam in her face, I laughed because, you know, <laughs> get the hell away from this damn door and Joy come the hell on out of here. Now, when she got out there, the whole family has something to say about why are you late? We told you we had to you going to have to wait anyway. No matter what time you show up at that prison, you go sit there and you go wait. So it doesn't matter if you wait earlier or if you wait later, you're still going to have to wait. And I didn't appreciate how they kept trying to scald her the entire time that they were driving there. And I love how she just plainly answered their question. She let his sister know that her money is not her business. 
She let the mom know, no, I haven't seen him in jail, but I'm here now. Not only is she here now, she was here with her $40,000. She was here with all her phone calls and emails and all that other stuff. You guys need to really calm down. They are sitting around acting like this dude is a saint. He is not. He is not. He is going to use joy until these reality TV checks dry up and then he is going to be out and joy is going to be hurt. Joy, get on that private eye. Find your damn self-worth, self-esteem, and your common sense. Quick. Key Rock and Brittany. Now, Key Rock and Brittany are supposed to go and meet Brittany's dad. Key Rock trying to practice his Spanish at the restaurant. No, sir. Just say hello. That's, that's going to work. You know, none of that other stuff. Because whatever Key Rock was trying to say, it just didn't work. Now, what pissed me off the most is Brittany kept trying to call her father and he would not even answer the phone. Now, I know that her father does not appreciate her lifestyle, is very upset with her choices, very angry at the fact that she ended up in jail and now she's in this relationship with Key Rock. I know all of that. However, the very least you could have done is call her and tell her that you can't make it for dinner or at least pick up the phone when she's trying to call. The fact that she breaks down and cries like that just totally broke my heart. It really did. I keep thinking that at some point her parents are going to realize that this is their child. Even if they don't appreciate how she's living her life, you still have to realize that she's your child. You love her. Life is going to be so much better having her in it than not. You know, it just takes some people some time and it's clearly going to take her parents some time. Now, when Brittany is having some time with Key Rock's mom, um, at the beginning, I laughed so hard because Brittany's mom was telling her about collard greens and all the food that she prepares and Brittany claims she doesn't like. And his mom said, uh-uh, no ma'am. She said, you ain't get all that butt not liking it. She said, you like the collard greens, the chitlins, the pig feet, the ham hock, the neck bones, the cornbread, and the biscuits. Now his mom is such a sweetheart. I absolutely love Key Rock's mom. Um, I would rather see Brittany forge a mother-daughter relationship with Key Rock's mom and break up with Key Rock. The conversation was extremely heavy and they talked about a situation that happened to her where she was essayed by three dudes and left in a ditch with a broken uh, collarbone and she lied to her family about how she got the co broken collarbone because she was afraid that they would, you know, blame her. And that broke me down. I mean, I sat there and cried because this girl, she has been through so much in her young life. She is 22 years old and she has been through a shit ton of things. And she is dealing with a lot of trauma. And in my opinion, Key Rock is going to finish breaking her. He is not good for her. Key Rock comes from a good family, but Key Rock is not good for her. Now, his mom is a huge blessing for her, a huge blessing, and she is there for Brittany. She is there as a shoulder to cry on. She is somebody that loves Brittany. Brittany can confide to her. She can get all of the mothering she needs from Key Rock's mom. They have a beautiful relationship, but you know, Key Rock has to go in my opinion. I just don't think that Key Rock is what she needs. What I think she needs is her own place, to continue with school, continue working, and start therapy. That's what I think she needs, but that's just my opinion. I'm on the outside looking in. Um, I just think that she deserves more. Anyway, peeps, get down in the comments and let me know what you think. And until next time, bye.